do the uh, the la- best. The, the best is the last, right? So we're on, <laughs> we're on the last panel for the U.S. Um, and this is with Garth Holzinger, who is in the West Coast. And uh, we took you off of an earlier panel so that you could uh, uh, wake up, in fact. Yeah. Um, and and therefore we created a totally new panel. This is just your panel, so it's just you and me. <laughs> Great. Um, so um, really pleased to have you, Garth. And uh, before we kind of talk a bit more about the subject, which is kind of the idea of accelerators and, mm-hmm. and, and incubators in the U.S., East Coast, West Coast, um, and how they might tap into Central European tech talent to, to scale up faster or to, to move faster. Um, intro yourself, please, and what you're doing. And you've got a lot of things you're involved with, Proto Ventures, Startup Rocket, New Ventures, but give us a bit of a background of who you are. Sure. So I come from, thanks for having me, Tom. I appreciate it. Uh, I started in Silicon Valley in 2008, just after the the crash, just after the last difficult time. Um, so I'm familiar with this this kind of uh, situation we're in now, um, and uh, that's really when the boom started, right? So I had worked at uh, some very fast growing companies, uh, Clout, Livefire, that that were you know acquired, and then I started uh, speaking to corporates the PNGs of the world um, while I was building those businesses. And they were increasingly frustrated and um, really in a panic um, because they were, they felt they were sort of losing uh, control uh, and, and visibility into what was going on in the startup world. And so uh, I, I built a practice really helping those companies uh, really, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, navigate and engage with startups, and that so has is that Startup Rocket. Um, startup Rocket is a is a platform that we built uh, at Proto Ventures because there was no real platform for founders to walk through all the steps that they need to take from ideation all the way to funding and, and scaling up a business. You know, there is no great uh, teaching methodology that is in one place and there was no real platform that actually kind of walks you through what you need to do and very often what we find we work with at proto we work with we're probably incubating 20 startups at any one time and and we've got a fund we're investing um, we find that when those steps are skipped it is often a recipe for disaster later on and so we built a platform uh, we it's it's pretty early we launched it without any marketing we've got about ten thousand founders on there using it for their own ventures um and increasingly uh uh, corporate uh, accelerators and incubators are using it as well for their process so i interrupted you when you were talking a bit more about the incubators and uh, the larger corporates that are are right so 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 what what started to happen was they started to want to uh, you know certainly have visibility into what was going on in in emerging tech and they were only focused on san francisco at the time they weren't focused on uh the czech republic and estonia and romania and slovenia and 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 croatia right and and uh, you know uh, berlin and uh (laughs) all of china and india etc yes uh so they started to build innovation groups that have now become very sophisticated and essentially take the form of corporate accelerators and incubators inside large companies. And that's, I'm working a lot with them to help them bring startups to them that are relevant, that are vetted, that, that are, you know, in, in the space. Uh, and these are people like Citibank, AB InBev, um, P&G, MasterCard, uh, they have built sophisticated, uh, because we've had now seven or eight years, innovation wasn't a thing seven or eight years ago, right? Now now it's in everyone's title. Uh, so, yes. um, you know, and now those groups are sophisticated. Uh, they have a venture arm and they have a kind of innovation arm. And so there's a path. And so this is uh, really interesting, I think, for, for CEE uh, countries and startups. There is a path that is outside of the VC world and the angel investor world. We always think, oh, I got to go get investment in the US. I've got to, how do I access the VCs and the investment community? When in fact, uh, another path is how do I access the corporate people 
who are actually also investing, wanting to pilot, wanting to partner with startups at early stages. And it's very early stage focused. And uh, that's a tough one to see. What happened was the startup world exploded in terms of scale. You know, and I'm talking, it, it was already difficult to navigate before AI, machine learning, VR. It was already, they were in a panic. Okay. <laughs> now, now, you know. So much thrown at them now, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Now they're really like, wow, how do we, how do we deal with all of this? So they had to build these, these uh, innovation groups that, that understood and could engage. So there's this big appetite. But the, the problem is that, that the startup world just exploded in terms of numbers and startups, countries, startup hubs around the world. The corporate people basically are the same people. Right. You know, they're still the same person at P&G. So they, and in five years ago, six years ago, it was an electric time. It was super exciting. They wanted to meet with every startup that they could. Yeah. But a lot of those meetings were not good meetings. Mm. They had hundreds of meetings where founders would come in, they would show them 35 slides, they would say, isn't it amazing? Yeah. Um, yes, but we're trying to solve a problem yeah. as P&G, right, or whoever. And very often there was not an understanding of the other side, of the corporate side. There was a great understanding of technology, uh, but there's this gap. And so uh, I've been working for seven, eight years to fill that gap, I guess okay. is one way to look at it. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, one of the suspicions among the entrepreneurs and early stage companies working with corporate incubators is they, that they exist only to take the idea and to swallow you up and, uh, and, and, and spit you out some later on. But so, so correct me in that, cor correct that perception. Yeah, that is, that is correctable. Not, <laughs> that, is, that, that, is, that is not my experience at all. Um, they want to leave the IP with, with the startup. They actually don't want to get in to uh, the execution side because they're, they realize like they're not very good at that. In fact, they're not in as fact, nimble. They can't, just can't move as fast as a small guy, right? That's sure, right. Sure. They, they realize now because we're at a different stage of maturity, they can kill a lot of companies. They can destroy a lot of startups that are in a fragile state, especially if it's early stage. Let's say they've got an A round, they partner with a large company that can just destroy them. Uh, so they've gotten good at, at working with startups, they've gotten better. Uh, and now there are processes and mechanisms in place that are, that are, that are you know, uh, I would say sustainable for the startup. The problem that, that companies have is how do I access those people? How do I, you know, you can't anymore, the volume's so great. Yeah. You can't send an email and get a response. You can't send a LinkedIn message and get a response. Right. So accelerators and incubators become important testing grounds and they increasingly look to those to find kind of the, to cherry pick out of those, uh, particularly the well-known programs. There's another interesting trend going on, which is universities. The universities have now created entrepreneurship programs. And it, within that, there's always an accelerator program. And startups can actually enter that and, and work with universities. But it's something they never sort of think of doing. Hmm. Um, you know, so you've got, you've got three tracks. I think you've got the, 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 the usual traditional VC. Let me go pitch my thing. Sure. Let me try to get in front of somebody and try to get some investment. I think there's this very interesting corporate path now that's open. Um, just every company that I know is, is, is trying to engage with startups. And of course, they now have venture groups and they invest. Uh, and then there's an interesting thing forming at universities where you have sophisticated accelerator programs uh, that, that actually welcome outsiders. Um, I teach a class at Princeton, and uh, th this is where I first sort of got a glimpse of how robust this, these programs are and how they're open to the outside. They, they actually welcome the outside to come in and they've got a lot so, of so they, might, so they might be open to if someone has no relationship whatsoever with Princeton and says, we yeah. just like your idea. Come oh, on. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah. They're looking, they're looking outside in the, in the entire world to try to find interesting companies uh, to, to bring in. So 
But but in answer to your question, the IP remains, they're not interested in executing and getting in and duplicating what you have. Um, there is a lot of acquisition that, that, that might occur. There's, there's investment, but they're not yeah. going to steal anybody's idea. Okay, let's go back, stay with the universities for a second, because that's also something that's it's relatively new to me as well. And um, the, the investment side of it, are they investing? Or are they bringing in other investors? I mean, um, is that also something they would do? So that's kind of the next stage. Uh, okay. that, that's, that, this, is, this is kind of incredible. Universities have realized, you know, they don't own any part of this. They're incubating all these companies. So well, what's happened is uh, ventures are starting earlier and early, even now into high school. So it, it's, yeah. it's not, it's, yeah. it was after you graduate. Now people are starting companies. They have been for a long time, but now it's sort of official. They're starting companies while they're in school. Yes. Right. Yes. And yes. they're still studying. Um, the, the university's caught on to this and said, well, we're not, we're not getting any ROI from this. And so why don't we start a fund? So there are many funds popping up at, at <laughs> universities, uh, and and they're 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 actually kind of looking to invest. It's it's a very interesting development, um, and I've seen it at Rutgers, at Princeton, at USC, uh, at Stanford, obviously, uh, Berkeley, and and some other University of Washington, some big schools that are. But, however, they're saying like we don't. This is not something we're really good at. So can right. you help us? <laughs> right. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And the. Um, I mean, how would anyone from Europe here find out who the hell to talk to a university yeah. accelerator program? I mean, um, is there a website of all the programs or a... No, you know, this, this is the problem. Be. There should be. Yeah, somebody yeah. should do yeah. that as a startup. Yeah. You got to do that. Do that in your night. night <laughs> so, yeah, it's like while you're sleeping. Let's yeah. build a directory, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they're pretty accessible uh, yeah. because the university, uh, the people who run the... It's, it's typically the entrepreneurship program at the university. Uh -huh. That's where that lives, right? And uh, you can you can literally find them on on the website. I mean, yeah. and and yeah. they don't get called a lot. Yeah, right. So, exactly. so you know they're not being pitched stuff left and right. It's not yes. like a, a city bank or something. Yeah. So they're they're rather accessible and easy to find. On the okay. corporate side, it's much more difficult. Uh, they yeah, just, help help our audience crack the nut a little bit on the corporate side because you you mentioned you know, City and Mastercard, PNG, yeah. um, I mean ABB. These are big big ass companies, and uh, you're going to get a phone call, and it seems like no one will process. I mean, how how would one say, look, I've got a, I think maybe a brilliant idea that City should be interested in a fintech idea. Yeah. Um, I want to discuss that with the incubator. I mean, yeah. geez, so, where do you start? So if you look at uh, a good example is Mastercard Labs in fintech. Uh, 200 startups at any one time. It's an ongoing incubator. It's really an incubator because it, it, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, you know, J Labs is another great example, which is J and J's uh, 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 accelerator, super successful. Mm -hmm. They have application processes, so you you okay. do have a process you can yeah. go through. Mm -hmm. It really helps because of the again because of the volume that we're talking about. You know, they'll get they'll get uh, 15,000 applications um you know to sort through mm -hmm. so it's a lot it didn't used to be that way every year it's more and more uh mm -hmm. it really helps to wow. know some to know someone and i i think you have to i mean it's you know in some ways it's easier now with COVID. in some ways it's harder right you used to be able to go there see what's going on go to their events and meet people yeah but right. events is the way that we go and meet people it is right. event it's like this it's like yes because email people and linkedin and sure. this and hello oh, yeah that is not working anymore Th those days are gone yeah. right uh or you know someone who has that contact. even you don't answer my emails garth <laughs> <laughs> oh i do now <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> but yeah you're right the, the personal touch the human touch you yeah. know filter through exactly. hey this guy's actually i can talk to him some more absolutely right. Right, Absolutely. Right, right. Events are still king. I think events are still, and it's it's going to be that way, whether it's virtual or whether it's right. whatever. Events are really what powers all of that, and yeah. it is the way to break through. Um, unless you, you know, there are, you know, if you you have to know somebody who knows somebody. It really is yeah. now that that is the case.
Yeah. Uh, Garth, tell us a bit more other things you're doing, and you kind of alluded to in an earlier conversation some more things in Central East Europe that you're looking at or trying to partner up with, find some um, allies here. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah. what, what I'm what I'm doing is classifying uh, and 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 really trying to build a, a, a vast database of startups in every category. And I've been working a lot now. I'm in contact, and I'd like to talk to more uh, FDI, you know, agencies because when I talk to them, when I talk to those cities and those mm -hmm. agencies in the from those cities like Sofia and etc., yeah. startups are not well represented in general in that space. I think you know there are there are some agencies who say, oh, we have a startup, we have a person that just focuses on our startups. Right. But in general, that that FDI business was not a startup focused business. No, it's an inward investment they focus. Right. Yeah. They're trying to bring in big investment, new jobs, et cetera. Yeah. And yes, they do have someone in the corner that's the startup person, yeah. but it is a different world and, and they that's are right. the, the second class citizen in that city. That, that's structure. right. That's right. Now I do see this uh, even in the year, I see it changing because when I talk to them about startups, they say, oh, we've got an amazing startup uh, ecosystem here, so, something like Warsaw. I mean, you know, look at Warsaw, right? Yeah. We've got, we have this incredible, vibrant, uh, super sophisticated uh, ecosystem. Um, we, we don't have the investors over there, the corporates over there, they don't have visibility into our startup world. And so I see a big opportunity and I see a growing interest when I talk to people like uh, like uh, those FDI agencies in those cities, they, they perk up yeah. because they're like, well, part of our task is not only to bring business here, but it's actually to support our startups and, what I'm, and, and, and get them out there. It's very important. And they yes. actually have funding for this, right? Yes. They actually have funding for this. So I'm well, excited. We can certainly about help that. you and connect you to all of the FDI agencies yes. and city agencies across Central East Europe. I think we know every single one of them yes. personally. So certainly can help you with that. I'll be, the other thing I'll that I'll give you. it. I'll also give a shout out to Wolf Summit, which is actually, I'm in their office right this second in Wrocław, right. and these guys have become a de facto um, Hopin technical support team, and they're running third party events for Hopin, which is, and it's including my event today. Right. Um, but Wolf Summit is a um, uh, Central European based startup uh, matcher that connects um, startups from this region to VCs, and they have an enormous database of startups, including they have an event coming up October. 6th, 6th, 7th. But that's definitely another place to start with, uh, Garth, uh, Great. For, for a conversation. Great. You know, and at this point, every startup in San Francisco and everywhere in New York and Chicago and everywhere else, Austin, they're using uh, Eastern European developers in yes. some capacity. Everybody is. Yeah. Right? So, the, in, in, you know, I saw an interesting trend there, which is we used to go through brokers. We used to go to an agency. We used to go to somebody who could just do. Now we're actually reaching out to individual developers, right. and and okay. and and that might be a, a COVID pandemic thing, where it's just we just, or it's the model was you know unless you need five people, we can't help you. Uh, we're only interested in teams of five and up. Um, yeah. But very often, early stage companies need one great developer in a very specific uh, area, and they find them in Eastern Europe. They really do. They, right. The talent is so is so good. It's so high. Well, that is the, the largely what this event is all about. The yeah. digital services, you know, matchmaking yeah. events, and we're doing them quarterly. The next one will be in January. So yeah, yeah. absolutely, that is that is the focus. So, yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, and in terms of uh, the, you saying you're trying to build up that let's say database of startups yes. is that because you then want to help those u.s corporate yes incubators yes filter through the find yes. the needle in the haystack yes in fact the the large companies uh i would say 10 or 12 have asked me to do that because the problem was it was a very random process there was no de there was no real yeah, you process. could say you could say I go to Crunchbase, I look in there and see what's going on and, and whatever. And nobody has time for that. Somebody <laughs> has to they have to go and say, I need five companies in this category, you know, voice AI that right. are vetted, where we've looked at the team, we've looked at the product, we know there's a market. Those are the three things we care about. 
And can you please bring those five to us? So it's interesting. So it, it you know, goes to the issue of why don't somebody build a directory of these companies and just have them at, have them at your fingertips. Um, and so they can, they can then access them. Um, and that's, that's valuable for me because I'm also constantly, we're also constantly talking to companies. We're investing in companies and, you know, COVID has accelerated some things that were already happening, right? So it's now, you know, it's, it is now a global world period. And that's, that's going to be something that is permanent. And, it's, and that's why I say some ways it is, it is making it easier for us yeah. because, you know, we're just, nobody asks anymore, where are you? No, nobody cares. Right. <laughs> you know? right. And right. so we've right. been, we've all been working virtually for 15 years. We waited, yes. for, we waited for the rest of the world to catch up. Now they, they're starting to, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's great. But it, it just flattens the world. So I think for startups, that's a super positive thing. Um, you know, just think about it. If you're a startup with a, four other companies, you could put together a little event on Zoom, on Hopin, on whatever, and you could just spin that up, invite some people, and they could jump on and boom. That was hard to do before this. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> so I think we have to like really think about taking advantage of that and, and being proactive. Uh, we've, got, we've got everybody's attention now. Yes, right, right, right. That's a good point. <laughs> it always it always struck me as funny that there's this. If I go to Kleiner Perkins or or Sycamore, largest VC or <clears throat> AZ, yeah, um, and I'm there all the time. You know, I'm like, it is amazing their appetite to invest and to see new companies. People don't realize they think, uh, how will I ever get a meeting there? They right. are. They are wh bring me startups. Bring me companies that I can invest in because I have so much money to invest and I don't have enough companies that, that, that I've, you know, my deal flow. So it's amazing that this people think the opposite. I'll never get in the door at Sycamore. How am I going to do that? They're sitting there. Their task is we want to see as many companies as possible. Yeah. Um, now, having said that, the presentations, the the positioning, all of that in general in startups is not very good yeah. and it needs work. And yeah. so I think uh, very often people need to really prepare more than they do. Yeah. Tighten up the presentation. Uh, yeah, the presentations, pitch. presentations. One minute will do it, not 15. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. And, okay. you know, I think we know that we know what's good at this point. We know what works. Uh, so, uh, you know. And again, it's those three things, right? It's it's the team. We invest, you know, we invest in the, in the same way that everybody else does. You look at the team, you look at the product, and you look at the market. Is there a market for this? And th those are the three. And even if you have two, it, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, Garth, we're going to stay on schedule and wrap up here. Any Great. any final comments or thoughts from your side? Um, about just this? I'm I'm very optimistic, and CEE to me is like a, an incredible incredible asset that is growing. And uh, people are becoming, you know, aware of it. And, and I think, you know, I think we can help them, those cities, those agencies, those places. Uh, we can really help them connect. Um, and and I, I'd like to be a part of that. Good. Well, well I'll, I'll say for myself, we're keen to work with you more than we have so far. And let's, let's discuss that more. And there may be other people in the audience who may have the same opinion and hope they'll reach out to you as well. Thanks, Tom. Um, so Garth will wrap up and you can be on the panel as I say my, my final thanks to everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks to the Wolf Summit team and Rafael and Joanne, everyone else. You guys have done an extraordinarily good job. And I must say today, technically nothing went wrong. Wow. Every, everything was on. Every oh. screen sharing worked. Every speaker was here. That's Some of them in the last second, but it got done. So thanks <laughs> to everyone and the team here who got it done. Um, we are back on in January uh, with the next quarterly event, uh, third one. Um, I want to say again, thanks to all the sponsors, the city of Plovdiv, Bulgaria, uh, city of Poznan, city of Wrocław. Um, associations, uh, Latvia IT cluster, the Anis out of Romania, AI Best out of Bulgaria, the Lviv IT cluster, um, IVSC Hungary, uh, who else do we have? The German Polish Chamber of Commerce, the British Polish Chamber of Commerce, the Vienna Business Agency, Advantage Austria, and I'm probably left someone out. Anyway, 
Um, thanks to all of you guys for spending time today. Appreciate you tolerance with the new systems. Uh, we did better with the uh, hop in, a lot far better this time. We did better with the one on one matchmaking this time. We'll keep improving, we'll keep learning. Uh, we'll back soon. Feedback, give us comments, email me. I'll answer your email. Rip me apart. I'll take all the criticisms you got for me. We will learn from it and make it better. Uh, thank you all very much. Garth, thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the day. I'm going for a glass of wine. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have a coffee. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you very much.